And this is kind of the pinnacle of what I was trying to relate to you guys um, for doing. If you guys look at this, I have an equation. Everything over here, I showed you guys how to factor. We don't have a way, this is non-factorable, all right? We can't factor this. So then what other ways can we do to find the zeros? Well, I tell you it's a factor. And again, what does a factor tell us? A factor tells us that something divides into something else, right? So we can, so if we can divide, if we can take our factor, divide it into our polynomial, the answer is going to be also a, starts with an F, a factor. Think about it again this way, guys. 3 is a factor of 27, agreed? 3 divides into 27. Well, how many times does 3 divide into 27? 9. 9 is also a factor, right? Now, once we know the factors, what do we do with the factors to find the zeros? You set them equal to 0. So if I take this polynomial divided by a factor that we know it's divisible by, I'm going to get an answer that's also a factor. I now take that answer that's a factor and set it equal to 0 to find the zeros. So we have two different ways we can do that. We can use long division or synthetic division. However, I told you guys in your notes last class period, to, it's preferable to use synthetic division because I think it's easier. But you can only use synthetic division when your divisor is a linear binomial. Is this a linear binomial? Yes. How do you so, know if it's a linear binomial? Well, binomial means it has two terms. Linear means it has a degree of 1, Okay, which we're good. So in our, in our steps from last class period, so if you missed last class period, this is what we finished off the class with. If you missed last class period, when you have to use synthetic division, the first thing we do is we, find, we take our factor and we find the 0. So x equals negative 5. That is our 0. Now we take our 0 and we put it outside of this little like kind of L. Okay. Then what we do is we take the factors of each term and we list them in a row. Okay. So now the rule for this is we're basically the first term you bring all the way down, which is a 1. First one is kind of like a freebie. Then we multiply on the diagonals and add on the vertical. 1 times negative 5 is negative 5. 3 plus negative 2 is negative 1 times negative 5, yeah, it's negative 5. 3 plus negative 5 is negative 2. I said negative 2 too soon. Then you multiply negative 2 times negative 5, which is positive 10. Negative 13 plus 10 is going to give you a negative 3. Then negative 3 times negative 5 is now going to give you a positive 15. Negative 15 plus 15 is 0. So that means you have a remainder of 0. So that, what that does is that just val validates that x plus 5 evenly divides into this polynomial, right? Because there's a remainder of 0. So if that's your remainder, that's your constant, that's your linear, and that's your quadratic term. So to write the answer, just give me one second, to write the answer of this factor divided into this polynomial is x squared minus 2x minus 3. That is the answer. But again, what also is that? That is also a factor. So how do we go from fa if, Again, the question is, solve for the zeros. So if we know one factor, we found the zero. If we know the other factor, to find the zeros, we have to set it equal to zero. zero. So you, now you set it equal to zero. Now, can we just solve for x like this? Yeah. No, it's not that easy, right? Now, again, we have to use diamond. factoring the diamond. So I create a cross, and I say negative 3 and negative 2. What two numbers multiply to give you negative 3 and then add to give you negative 2? Negative 3 and 1. Yes, Crystal? So you do negative 3 plus negative 5 is negative 2. Negative 5 times neg negative 2, sorry, times negative 5 is positive 10. Negative 13 plus, neg plus 10 is negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 5 is positive 15. Add the vertical, multiply the diagonals. 
So therefore, our factors is x minus 3 times x plus 1 equals 0. So now, you set these equal to 0. x minus 3 equals 0, and x plus 1 equals 0. Therefore, x equals 3, and x equals negative 1. So the zeros of this polynomial, we didn't have to do any factoring. You guys see that? We didn't have to do any factoring. So all we simply did was we applied to long division with a factor. We factored it. And then we found the zeros, which are 3, negative 1, and negative 5. Now, let me ask a question that I didn't ask 